next two exercises for you. They are the deadlift and the squat that were covered in the workshop. Unfortunately, Kelly's data, or there was a problem with O2, so it didn't record for whatever reason. So I'm gonna cover them now, so you can have them for those of you that didn't get a chance to attend the workshop. So, we're gonna talk about the squat first. The squat is a compound lift. It's a very crucial lift to get right that is a very key movement for a lot of you know, your exercises that you're doing in your workout regime. We're gonna run through how you can improve your squat and the sort of things you wanna be looking for whilst you're squatting. So, a squat. We generally stand feet shoulder width apart, okay? We let our knees track with our toes. You know, there's this sort of like rule of thumb for people who are trained that you're supposed to be on train tracks. We now know that that is biomechanically not the way in which we do a squat. You simply allow your knees to track with your toes wherever you feel comfortable, okay? So when we're doing a squat, I'm gonna do mine first and demonstrate how the exercise should be done. And I'm gonna give you a quick tip on how you can actually improve it using a door handle or a fixed object to squat onto. So, stand feet shoulder width apart. Okay, we're already mobile, we're already warm by this point, we've raised our heart rate up, we've got our joints moving freely, okay? So, you've got two options really, you can cross your hands across your chest, or you can take your hands out in front of you, whichever you feel comfortable with, okay? So, we turn feet shoulder width apart, we allow the hips in a squat to break first. So, the hips break first in the movement, whilst our chest stays upright, our core is tight, our spine is neutral in a completely straight position or as close to, to avoid having any lower back pain. So what that will look like is this, feet shoulder width apart, my feet slightly track out to the sides, okay? And I'm gonna tense my glutes at the top, and then I'm gonna release, and I'm gonna squat down, okay? I'm here. If I wanna go a little bit deeper, I slightly have to just widen up my stance ever so slightly to allow me to do that. So, if I'm going to go for a full depth, it will look like this. And I'm here, okay? That is a squat. A lot of you are probably thinking, wow, I, I, I haven't got that mobility, I'm not able to get that level of form. And I would always go for form is crucial over speed or weight. Get your form correctly and really hone in on understanding that exercise biomechanics and getting your body in the right position is crucial to prevent injury. It can actually do more bad than good. So, a quick fix of how you can improve your squat and get into the best squat position. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this chair. Okay, so stand, feet shoulder width apart from a chair, arms out straight, arms are always out straight, feet shoulder width apart, and the idea here is to keep your arms straight through the whole movement. Don't worry about what's going on with your knees or your hips or your ankles. Your body will automatically drop into the position it's meant to be in, okay? So we're facing forward, our chest is high, our arms are straight, and we squat down. Arms stay straight. What this is doing, subconsciously, is training you into a new movement pattern. You take your arms away, you stay in the same body position, and you squat. And what you'll find is, you're still in the same position. That is a quick one minute fix on how you can improve your squat. I hope that helps, right? Next exercise, deadlift. Okay, the deadlift is exactly what it says. It's a deadlift off the floor. Okay, so where to hold where to hold the piece of apparatus, whether it's a resistance band or whether it's a barbell. Okay, so we're in a pronated grip, hands down. We wrap around the bar. We bring the bar into, you can have just, just wider than the shoulder width. It's perfectly fine on the outside of the thighs. The first phase of a movement in the deadlift are our feet in this position are facing forward. Okay? So this movement you have your feet facing forward and they're parallel, okay? First phase of the movement is something called a hip hinge. And the hip hinge is when your hip is the primary joint that is moving. So the hip hinge looks like this. That is a hip hinge, okay? That is a small movement. And what happens is with a deadlift is the bar travels down, 
down, down, down, it goes past the knees and we drop. Here is when we're in our crucial that we've got our squat position perfect, okay? So again, slow motion, down, 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 boom, okay. How's that for everybody? If you're up to speed with me now, you should be sort of like getting somewhere close to deadlifting correctly. If that's a little bit tricky and you're struggling with your movement, you can do it with a kettlebell. Okay, so we have our chest up high, your feet shoulder width apart, facing forwards, and you're gonna squat down. That is also a kettlebell deadlift. Okay, if we was here, it's a kettlebell squat, it's a goblet squat, okay? So, back to the broomstick, feet facing forward, hip hinge, down, 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 down. If you notice, my chest stays upright through the whole movement, my arms stay long, my face is facing forwards. Good. Works the whole posterior chain, all the way from the calves, hamstrings, glutes, lower back, mid back, upper back, all the way up to the traps and puts a lot of emphasis on your arms as well. I hope that helps.